Buckle up, Buttercup, because we're going down one seriously nerdy conspiracy theory rabbit hole today. Is Germany, as in the German government itself, looking to put a back door into Arch Linux, specifically via the Arch Linux package manager are they looking to do that and before you write this off as the stupidest sounding conspiracy theory you've ever heard let's go let's go over the details because uh, there's i think this is worth at least worth considering two days ago i reported that the german government via the sovereign tech agency paid a little over half a million dollars to create tools and and libraries for arch package management in rust it's a bizarre thing to do for a a government right there there's no real net benefit there for germany at at face value like uh they're if they're contributing this money to specifically redeveloping taking pre-existing package management in one linux distribution in arch linux and rewriting it in a in an entirely new not yet finished programming language what does the german government get out of that right it raises at least enough red flags that you have to start asking yourself why would they do this it's not to get voters <laughs> is the is the People who use Arch Linux but are also members of the Church of Rust and are German voters demographics so large that they need to start chasing those votes? No. <laughs> No, it's not. Uh, there's there's no net win here from a publicity perspective for the German government. Does this have an, a significant impact on um, cost savings for the German government? Because sometimes governments will invest in engineering in order to save costs in other ways. No, no, it, it does not. In fact, it raises costs because you're taking something that works and creating a replacement for it that doesn't yet work, right? So it actually raises costs. Okay, so that's, that's not it you start going down the list of all the logical reasons why the german government might invest into an engineering project like this and it's really hard to find one germany doesn't isn't just sitting around with trillions of trillions of dollars in cash that they can just throw at things so what is their motivation here uh, i think this is worth thinking about and i'm going to posit something here i'm going to suggest that what if Germany was looking to put a back door into the package management of Arch Linux, right? To find a simple, low cost, I mean, half a million dollars ain't much in the grand scheme of things, way to invest in getting a back door or the method of putting a back door into Arch Linux. Okay, is that is that a viable thing to do? Well, here's here's two two ways to look at this. The first is that this is not an unusual thing for any government, including the German government, to do in general. Uh, in fact, uh, back putting back doors into software or software and hardware products is a very, very regular thing that governments do. Uh, within the United States, um, uh, the uh, Communications uh, uh, Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act uh, requires that telecommunications equipment makers provide abilities for government eavesdropping that was from 1994 in the United States uh, there's the cipher chip um, there's uh, issues with uh, NSA and encryption um, we, we know of multiple attempts um, for governments of various kinds to put back doors into Linux into a wide variety of other systems and those are just the things that we know about Governments putting back doors into operating systems and communications tools and whatnot and key infrastructure is not only nothing new, it's extraordinarily common. And, and, and it's common based on, again, only the ones we know about. And ostensibly, there's a whole lot of them we probably don't know about because they're, they work better if you don't know about them. Now, when we start talking about trying to put in back doors into new pieces of software, 
it's best if you can do so via a compiler to sneak in to sneak in backdoors. That that's really a great way to do it because then you can have self-propagating backdoors where the code doesn't exist. I want to I want to uh, point something out here. Um, this isn't like in, an entirely hypothetical thing. This has been done before. Um, uh, 1984. I'm just going to re read something I wrote previously here about uh, Ken Thompson's paper on this. In 1984, Ken Thompson, the Unix legend, revealed to the world that several years earlier he had implemented functionality within the the standard C compiler, which injected a backdoor into the Unix login, right? When So when you're compiling the login program, it injected a backdoor into it. That, that, uh, that little backdoor creating code was self-replicating, meaning that uh, even if the code itself for creating the backdoor was deleted from the compiler, the compiler re-added the functionality when it compiled itself. And it was almost undetectable. So he created created code put it into the compiler that said, hey, if you're compiling the login program on Unix, uh, insert this this little code. Basically insert a, 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 a master password that lets you automatically log in as, as root just by typing in Ken Thompson's password, right? And then he, he compiled it and then deleted the code for it. And the code was built so that every time you compile the compiler, uh, it injected that code back in to create that additional code in the login prompt. It was, it was devious, it was ingenious, and it was extremely simple to do and nobody detected it. No one knew about it until years later when Ken Thompson went out and told everyone that, hey, I did this. Uh, and he made this statement, quote, to what extent should one trust a statement that a program is free of Trojan horses? Perhaps it is more important to trust the people who wrote the software. Um, it is important, and this, this is a very critical bit. If you don't have 100% trust in absolutely everyone who wrote the software, it is very difficult to trust a piece of software. And, and a compiler itself really, <laughs> it, it, it has the potential for spreading issues like this far and wide, especially when you have a programming language where there is primarily just one compiler. And that is the situation we have with Rust. Like with C, there are several C compilers uh, with different licensing and different focuses and focusing on different versions of C and all sorts of stuff. With Rust, there's the Rust C compiler. And Rust, by and large, is being pushed by lots of people who are political activists. And, and say what you will about their, their particular political activism, but if you have a compiler for a language where you really only have one compiler, one reference compiler, and that's what everyone uses, that makes it, and from an engineering standpoint, almost trivial to sneak in this sort of functionality, the ability to inject backdoors and Trojans into the compiler itself, self-replicating backdoors where the code is not visible anymore. It's not that difficult to do. Ken Thompson was able to do it and no one saw it for years and years until he told us about it. Um, but then on top of that, when you have a lot of the people who are working on that compiler or advocating for that compiler or in the ecosystem around it, pushing for extreme political upheaval, like um, many of the Rust activists identify as Antifa. Right now, Antifa is a terrorist organization, at least in the United States, um, but they still have a lot of them out there. Um, and that's just kind of how it is. So they're pushing for political change as is. Um, so what is stopping one of those activists from implementing nefarious functionality into the Rust compiler? Almost nothing, all right? A very little, if anything, is, is stopping any of them from doing it. So then the, that begs the question, what is stopping a government from doing the same thing as what a bunch of ragtag Antifa activists could also do? And then the answer, again, is almost nothing. 
if uh, all a government really needs to do without even having the engineering know-how is to find one of those sorts of activists who can be bought and have them do it. That's really all there is to it. Uh, now, you might say, well, that someone, surely someone would have noticed. Well, did anyone notice when Ken Thompson did it with C? Nope. Nobody did. Uh, that begs the question, and this has been raised many, many times by many, many engineers, um, far more, uh, you know, oh, high and mighty than I, than I am. Um, but how do we know this hasn't been done uh, a million times since then? And the, and the answer, short answer is, we really, really don't. Uh, there, there really is not a good, easy way to, to figure out if it is even done. Um, so I asked over on, on X, I'm like, let's do an informal poll. Like where, what do people generally think about this? The German government paid half a million dollars to Arch Linux to rewrite Arch package management in Rust. And some people were hypothesizing, uh, cause I, I wasn't the first one to even bring this up that Germany is hoping to inject backdoors or other spyware Trojans into Arch using Rust. How likely do you believe that is, right? How likely is it that Germany is hoping to do that, right? Not that necessarily it's already been done, but Germ that Germany is trying to do that. 36% uh, said it was very likely, 28% said somewhat likely, 13% said somewhat unlikely, and 22% said somewhat unlikely. So it's uh, pretty heavily tilted towards likely. Uh, so what we've got here, 50, 60, 4, 65, 64 plus percent of people are like, yeah, that that seems pretty gosh darn likely to me, uh, somewhat or very likely that Germany's trying to do that here. Because why wouldn't they? Governments do this all the time. There is uh, a valid use for governments injecting backdoors into systems, large and small. There's a large enough number of, of pieces of infrastructure out there that utilize Arch Linux that, you know, paying a, a moderate amount to try and get some sort of a backdoor, even if it's a, 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 a half-assed attempt at accomplishing a backdoor, that seems like a reasonable use of funds there. A, certainly a far more reasonable use of funds than any other perceived benefit the German government or people might get out of this. In fact, this seems like the most logical, from my point of view, reason to expend these funds on Arch Linux package management specifically rewritten in Rust. <laughs> that seems like the best reason for them to do it, right? Um, so, uh, so I ask you, I ask you, how likely is it that German want, Germany wants to do this? Have they already? Uh, I, I mean, I mean, really, if they have, how do you find out? I mean, how do you figure it out? And what's what's crazy about this is is how any, anyone who's spent, you know, years working in in compilers and, and, and this sort of thing knows that this is not that difficult to pull off. If you have a fair bit of skill, you can manage to to pull off this sort of thing. Um, and it's very rare that these sorts of things get caught red handed. You know what I mean? It's more it's more often that it comes out through uh, an accidental Freedom of Information Act leak or uh, the, the author of it tells us that they did it uh, than uh, than we find out via other mechanisms. Right. And so uh, it, it it seems crazy to me that I would posit this out there something governments do all the time, something that governments would be motivated to do, and uh, that there is a, a very clear and direct way that this could be accomplished. But people will yell and scream about this and be like, no, Lunduk's crazy conspiracy theory, Lunduk, he's saying awful things. No, there's no way this could happen. Lunduk must not understand how Rust works. There's no way that Rust could be, could be, done that th these sorts of backdoors could be put into rest there's no possible way man that's what the that, that's that's how it'll go right yeah uh, you, you know it is uh because rest is totally memory safe and, and every code that comes out of rest is pure and holy <laughs> you know that's the case oh that's that's how it's gonna go that's how it's gonna go um but i'm gonna put this out there that this this seems plausible to me uh and and i want to make something clear 
Rust is not the only programming language that this is a distinct vulnerability for. In fact, this really applies to pretty much every programming language and compiler out there. Rust is, in a way, at the moment, uniquely vulnerable to this sort of thing because Rust is still early in its implementation. It hasn't hit a uh, kind of a, a 1.0 baseline final release yet. Like the language is still unstable, meaning it has yet to stabilize. And so the compiler that is that everyone uses is the same compiler to the reference implementation because the, the language is just iterating so quickly. And you could say that that's a good or bad thing, but regardless of whether it's good or bad, it leaves Rust in a vulnerable position because the, we're using the compiler to compile itself and it's it's easy to self-replicate at this point. Uh, that's just that's just how it works. Um, thank you again to the, all the subscribers to the Lunduke Journal. If you haven't grabbed yourself a Lunduke Journal subscription yet, what in tarnation are you waiting for? $89 for a lifetime subscription all January long? Oh my word, what a sweet deal. Uh, go to lunduke.com and scroll down and you can click on that. You get the MP4 downloads, you get the PDF eBooks, you get the forum access, you get the warm fuzzy feelings of supporting the Lunduke Journal. You get added optionally to the am amazing Lunduke Journal lifetime subscriber wall of shame or something. Uh, and there's a second wall because there's there were so many people we added a second wall. And now we've got the third wall, which has a smaller font because we realized that, oh, oh my gosh, there's so many of you coming in that we, we needed... <laughs> We, we need we needed a smaller font on these walls. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a thousand walls in no time. But wall number three is almost filled. So if you want to get in wall number three, uh, act now. Supplies are running out. And uh, wall number four will undoubtedly probably be spinning up uh, in the next couple of days. But thank you to all of the Lunduke Journal subscribers for making it possible to do this sort of coverage, to talk about this sort of fun stuff. Uh, because you know what? This is a legitimate concern. It's a concern. It's a, something we should be thinking about. Putting, getting backdoors into compilers, government overreach, and and looking to influence the functionality such as backdoors into our operating systems. These are things that we need to be on the lookout for, regardless of the language, regardless of the operating system. We need to be vigilant about these sorts of concerns. And uh, this is just an interesting one that's popped up right now. Uh, so thank you again to all of the subscribers for making it possible to do this sort of work. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast. <laughs>